Hello chess friends and welcome to your of Chess channel and welcome to my commented chess game series. Today I wanted to show you something different than uh, the regular games that I've already shown you in this series. Today I wanted to show you a uh, game, it was a bullet game played by Magnus Carlsen against Andrew Tang. And okay, basically I don't uh, analyze and show uh, on my YouTube chess channel some bullet games. But uh, here I wanted to show you this game because in that game Magnus Carlsen had only one inaccuracy, zero mistakes and zero blunders. This is something else and uh, we have to ask ourselves uh, where is, uh, what's gonna be in the future with, with the chess. So we see these top grandmasters, so they play these games in which they ha don't have in any inaccuracies, any mistakes and any blunders. So we had a c couple of games in the World Championship match between Fabiano Caruana and Magnus Carlsen in which they didn't make any inaccuracies, uh, any mistakes and any blunders. So what's the future in chess? Uh, you see this uh, game that I'm going to show you today, it was a bullet game and Magnus Carlsen plays a really a perfection. So we have to ask ourselves where, uh, what's gonna be with the chess in like 10 or maybe 20 years when we will have this particular lines in, in an opening covered. So, but okay, let's see now today Magnus Carlsen fast, the fastest perfection maybe in, in, um, in on leeches because uh, it was a complex game. I'm not showing you a game in which um, he played maybe against an amateur he played against andrew tank also a very strong bullet player on leeches uh, i know you know them uh, you know him he plays very very fast he's one of the fastest chess players um, on the world these days and let's see now this magnus carlson's perfection so uh, of course we all know that uh, magnus is playing under the name dr nickterstein uh, and uh, he plays against andrew tank the penguin with the white pieces <coughs> So, d6 was played, uh, we have now uh, g6 by Carlson, the modern defense, c4, bishop on g7, e uh, knight on c3, d6, and now e4. Now, e5, and uh, this is a very good setup uh, for black, I think, because uh, with this e5, we already challenging here uh, the center if uh, d takes e5 we can uh, simply play with the bishop, and we bro broke already this uh, very, very good central control by by white so uh, here knight from g the two e2 was played and now carson simply takes we have knight takes on d4 and now we have a, a sort of a moroxy bind setup with uh, c4 and e4 and knight on d4 which means uh, white will have this very good central control but you see uh, while creating this setup in 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 the center of the board uh, white left also this d4 unprotected which could be maybe a problem in long terms uh, black can always push maybe the pawn on c6 uh, and prevent this knight on d5 idea you see if we uh, manage to somehow fix the position around the, the square d4 as black it will be a very good continuation uh, continuation for black so uh, many many strategical ideas in this opening lines and um, okay uh, those for those who are familiar with the moroxy but they know what i'm talking about uh, both black, black and white have good uh, good possibilities in these games so here um, Mar uh, carlson played uh, knight on e7 and uh, this knight on e7 is the preparation to play the move knight on c6 because if knight takes on c6 then we just bring another knight on c6 and again control the d4 the d4 square so bishop on e2 knight on c6 and now knight on c2 and uh, this is uh, also a common move in this moroxy bind setups uh, this knight on c2 um, now these two knights are not so good coordinated we have still uh, the central control with the two pawns and of course uh, we we will create sort of a blocking blockade system here with the b3 and try in slowly but uh, positionally uh, try to push the pawn on f4 it's not uh, easy for white to push the pawns immediately it has to be prepared uh, many moves have to be played so here magnus carlsen immediately breaks this central pawn uh, central pawn structure and as i said uh, magnus carlsen in this game played only one inaccuracy zero blunders and zero mistakes so i'll show you uh, this inaccuracy and i don't think that's uh, an inaccuracy because he played this rook on a very active file 
there were be better moves but this this moves were like uh, i don't know the stockfish analysis is of course um 20 moves in, in front so you you see that this rook will be an aggressive move and uh, it will force white to do something so i don't even think th uh, that he had any inaccuracies in this game so uh f5 breaking already this uh, very very um, uh, important e4 and c4 pawn structure we have um, e takes uh, f5 and now bishop takes on f5 many of us would take here with the knight because the knight would be uh, very good placed here on, on um, and will control the h4 again the d4 but you see we of we have already played with with this knight and it uh, really would break some uh, principles in an opening which says you shouldn't play with your piece twice so that's why here carlson played bishop takes on f5 very good and also attacking this c2 knight which is also controlling the d4 uh, square so you see very well uh, prepared modern defense uh, maybe we'll see magnus carlson playing the modern defense against d4 in some in in, in the in the near future we'll see i hope uh, he's gonna play it because it has this uh, very nice elements of the king's indian and i like the king's indian so it's always aggressive so I hope that uh, we'll see by Bangos this this types of line. So here we have knight on uh, e3 attacking the bishop on f5, which is a very active piece. But now Magnus simply castles and uh, knight takes on f5 and knight takes on f5 was played. Okay, uh, white has the bishop pair. It's still an open position, but uh, these two knights are really well, really good coordinated and they're um, really covering the center of the board. Uh, black's problem uh, in, in the position is the square d5 but the other thing is uh, white can only occupy this d5 square with uh, only one piece either you can um, occupy it with uh, the knight but then you will block out the bishop and w if you play something uh, maybe with the queen or with with the bishop here on d5 we can play simply king on h x so if you play something like queen on d5 we can simply uh, move the king and now uh, well the the uh, king here on h8 is not so endangered anymore you see uh, with this queen on d5 we have all uh, we have really blocked out now this knight uh, f uh, out of game because the knight cannot anymore jump on d5 and as i said if we jump with the knight on d5 then we cannot bring the other piece on the board uh, on d5 so if we bring the knight then a potential bishop on f3 would uh, really be blocked out by its own piece so uh, i don't think that the bishop pair is too, too much of an advantage here in this kinds of position so here uh, castling played by andrew tang the penguin so here we have knight on uh, d4 and you see now this very good coordination by the by the knights we have bishop on d3 and now c6 uh knight on e4 and now d5 immediately breaking through in the center although we have an open position but uh, these knights are very dominant in, in 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 the center so magnus carlson is not afraid here to uh, push the pawn uh, c takes d5 c takes d5 and now knight on c3 queen on f2 f7 and now again i hope you realize that uh, black has very good coordination here with the pieces uh, they are very well glued together as i always love to say and uh, this is a perfect coordination meanwhile white has problems uh, to develop the bishop here on on c1 and it could be a problem in long term so here rook on e1 and now rook from a to d8 and th this is the move uh, that uh, when i analyzed the game uh, on the computer which the computer showed that this was an inaccuracy so the the best move by the computer was the move a6 okay it's uh, it's in long terms i think this rook on d8 is a perfect move which discoverly attacks uh the queen here on on, on d1 and i think this is simply not an um, um, inaccuracy it's a perfect move i think and i would evaluate this move not as as an inaccuracy so um here also the computer instead of rook from a to d8 suggested knight on h4 which could also lead maybe after f4 into such lines and then you play knight uh, rook on d8 so it was a different move order i don't know uh, i don't know uh, 
uh, okay, we can play uh, different move order, but still with the same idea to bring the rook on the semi-open file, which will uh, discover the attacking the queen. Okay. Uh, as I said, I I would also hear your opinion. Do you think that this rook on d8 is an inaccuracy? I don't think so. Maybe you can you can write write some uh, write some opinions in my inbox. So here uh, after rook from a to d8, uh, queen on a4 was was played, and now you see uh the uh, the threat is here to take uh, the pawn on on a7. But uh, you see in the bullet game we don't. Uh, calculate of course so fast but Magnus fi finds always this best moves he plays the move b5 which uh, has a double function it, it attacks uh, also the queen but also is defending the a7 so you have to see that in that fi in such a fast time control it's really unbelievable how Magnus sees this moves really really fast here uh, queen on a3 was played and now knight on h4 now comes this you see it was simply played different move order okay um, knight on e4 was played and now knight from d to f3 uh, here we have the fork on the king and the rook uh, g takes f3 and now uh, queen takes on f3 now we have also uh, here the checkmate threat if you play bishop on f1 it doesn't help you because you get queen takes uh, on a3 we have maybe b takes on a3 but now knight on f3 uh, the king has to move we can take this rook so you see this other rook is also attacked so this would be a completely winning uh, winning game for for black so after um, uh, queen on f3, king on f1 was played, and now we have a forced sequence here. Uh, rook on d3, we have queen on uh, b4, uh, bishop on d4 attacking uh, this f2 pawn, uh, bishop on h6, and you see white now finished his development, but it's uh, too late now in the game. We have uh, queen on um, g2, king plays here on e2 and now we have the check uh, queen on e4 and in, in this uh, f in this position andrew tang resigned because if you play king on f1 then you get rook takes on f2 you have to play your king on g1 and then you get checkmated on g2 so uh, as i said i hope you realize this is a bullet game this is this is uh, something else i think this is not normal this is not human here uh, played by magnus carlson this is as I said, simply zero inaccuracy, zero b mistakes, zero blunders. That is something else. And I, I really ask myself, what's the future in chess? Maybe we, we, we will have after maybe 20, 10 or 20 years, maybe 10 or 20 players that can play bullet like this. I don't know. We'll see. And I'm re really looking forward to this new era in chess because it will be available for all of us. And that's the most important thing. I heard a couple of grandmasters. They're not. They're now uh, whining about some about some differences in chess. How young players uh, are very good now in chess. But that's. Uh, I think that's a good thing because chess is now available for all of us. And uh, let's see uh, who is going to play the best chess in the future. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this game. Meanwhile, you can watch my other um, common chess, chess games and you can also watch my best chess games of all time series and you can also subscribe to my channel. Thanks you for watching and chess is the best, of course.